Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AmoryTutors.com and welcome to this video on free radical substitution reactions. Now in this video we're going to look at some of the key points associated with free radical reactions. Uh, we're also going to look at a mechanism just to demonstrate uh, how we can apply these key points and also we're going to look at a specific example which is CFCs uh, and their environmental impact uh, particularly on the ozone layer and the reactions involved in that as well. So we're going to start by looking at the word free radical. Now free radical is just an atom that has one electron that is unpaired in its shell and that was created from a molecule uh, that was split using UV light or any source of high energy radiation. So um, that's effectively what a free radical is. And you're going to see this quite a lot um, through um, uh, examples that I'm going to go through here first. Okay, so we're just going to look at some key points and some of the key terminology because there's a lot of new uh, key terminology in this topic. Uh, and I've listed them here on the left hand side. So we're going to look at something called initiation. Now, this is part of the uh, mechanism involved with free radical substitution. So, initiation is where we get two radicals that are made from a homolytic fission um, using UV light. So, for example, we might take a chlorine molecule, Cl2, and we can split that in half using UV light, and we form two chlorine radicals. Again, I'll come on to an example, and I'll show you how we can work that properly. Uh, another step is propagation. Now, in a free radical mechanism, uh, propagation is where one radical and one non-radical react together, and we call this a chain reaction. So this is where um, you constantly get new radicals that are being reformed and reformed, and this can go on for... Um, a long period of time, or it can end immediately. Um, so it just depends on, on the conditions, and it's a little bit of chance as well, a little bit of luck. Uh, there's another step called termination. This is where two radicals will react to form a non-radical. So effectively, this ends the chain reaction um, and uh, effectively forms a non-radical molecule. And the last bit is homolytic fission. Now, remember, I've said this word before. Homolytic fission means we're breaking a bond and we're forming two radicals. Now, the word fission means to break something or to separate, and homolytic, homo meaning the same. So we're splitting the bond, but we're putting equal numbers of electrons into each atom. So we're forming radicals as a result of that. And we can represent this using, um, because it's a mechanism, we need curly arrows, and we can represent this using what we call half-headed arrows. Now, you can see here that we have an arrow here, and I've drawn an example, and this has just got a half head. So it's not a double-headed arrow. Uh, like a standard mechanism. And this is to show the movement of one electron from one place to another. Uh, and that's the key difference with um, radicals as opposed to a traditional uh, mechanism. And um, like I say, it shows the movement of one electron. Now, free radicals are really, really reactive species. They're really reactive, uh, a lot more reactive than any um, uh, delta, uh, any positively charged atom. So because they're really reactive, it means they are really good um, at making new products without a lot of energy other than the UV that's needed to get the reaction going. Uh, so they can provide some kind of use, but it can also be a downside, which I'll come on to later on. Uh, but the use we're going to look at in particular is making a halo alkane. Now, uh, I'm going to use an example of a uh, I'm going to make something called chloromethane, and I'm going to make that from an alkane, which are normally pretty unreactive. They're, they're pretty stable molecules, and we're going to react it with chlorine gas. Now, all we need to get this reaction going is UV light. Uh, if we expose these two chemicals to UV light, we can produce a lot of halo alkane, but there are downsides, and it's not very pure, as I'll explain in a minute. So I'm just going to walk through the mechanism with this, using these terminology here and explaining each step. So we're going to start with initiation. Now, initiation, uh, we'll do, I'll just represent it with the letter I. So initiation is showing two radicals that are made from homolytic uh, fission, which you can see on here. So we're going to start with chlorine. So we're going to draw Cl2, or two lots of Cl. Um, now, what happens is with UV light, the UV light comes in and it splits this atom into two parts. So we get one electron going that way, splits this molecule, so it's two parts, and it splits one electron goes into the other chlorine. So what we are effectively making is two lots of Cl dot, and we represent a, uh, a radical with a little dot on the top there, and that shows that it is a radical. Okay, so that's the initiation step. Then we need to do the propagation step. 
Now this is where it can get a little bit uh, tricky because there's a lot, there's a lot of things uh, happening here. But hopefully I'm going to go through a pretty simple method of remembering how to do this. So obviously we need our halogen to start off with, uh, and for propagation we now need to bring in our methyl molecule. So we're going to bring in CH4, which you can see there. There's our CH4, and we're going to react this with the halogen or the uh, chlorine. Um, radical that we formed over here. So I'm just going to add Cl dot, and that's what we've got there. Now, these two are react. Now, the radical is effectively being passed from one molecule to another. So when these two react, a hydrogen comes off here, and the dot now transfers over onto the uh, methyl group. So what we make is CH3 dot plus HCl. So now the radical's been moved across. It's like past the parcel, so it's moved the radical somewhere else. Now, the next step, you need to take your radical and bring it down into the next step here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the CH3 dot, and we're going to rewrite it down here for the second propagation step. Now, remember, we're wanting to make um, a um, halo arcane. So we've got the CH3 dot. Remember, propagation steps always have one radical and one non-radical. We've got our radical there. So to make a halogen, to make a haloalkane, we need to react it with Cl2 because that's the only thing that we have that we can make our meet our haloalkane, and it's a non-radical as well. So this is unsplit um, chlorine molecule. And again, we've got this past the parcel type thing, except this is a game of past the radical, I suppose. So we've got CH3 dot. The radical will move onto this side, and one of the chlorines will move over here. So what we form is our haloalkane. CH3Cl, and we also form Cl dot. Now, one of the key ways of knowing if you've done this right is the product of the second step must be a reactant in the first step. Now, you know one of your products has to be chloromethane, and that has to be a non-radical. So that gives you a big clue to make sure you've got this right. And also, the product of step one must be the radical product of step one, must be a reactant of step two. So that's a really good way of checking to make sure you've got all of your uh, uh, propagation steps correctly. Okay, and this will continue and it'll keep going and going and going. And sometimes you can take this and this can be one of the uh, uh, reactants and the Cl dot can react with this to form dichloromethane. And then the dichloromethane can then react with another Cl dot radical and form trichloromethane. And effectively you're forming impure versions um, of your hero alkynes, you don't just get chloromethane, this can react with the Cl dot. Remember, radicals are really reactive and they'll react with just about anything. Um, so, even including the uh, product that you've made, so they're not very good for a specific product. Okay, so this is called a chain reaction, so it keeps on going and keeps on going. Um, and sometimes we can have obviously termination reactions. Now, termination, as the name suggests, terminates or stops. The reaction from happening and for that we need two radicals to come together so um, we've got a few radicals floating around here so we're just going to come up with a, a few different combinations of termination reactions so we're going to start with cl dot and cl dot and these can react together and we can form cl2 uh, we can also take ch3 dot plus cl dot uh, and that can form ch3 cl so actually we can form our halo alkane through a termination step as well, not just propagation. Uh, and the last one we can form is obviously two CH3 radicals could come together. So put that there, CH3 dot. And what that will form is C2H6. So you can see we've got three different types of termination reaction. And again, this chlorine could, if the UV light's still there, split again and start the reaction again. As can this as well. This can create the Cl dot radical through the homolytic fission of CH3Cl. So that's really, really important. And you have got to know that you will get impurities because this can react again to form dichloromethane. Uh, and these can then split again to form UV light. So you can see why it's called a chain reaction. It just keeps going, keeps going, and keeps going. Until you take away the UV light, this reaction will still continue. Now, this is really important when we look at a chemical called CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, and they come in different forms. And I've written an example on here. So this is 1,1-difluoro, um, 1,1-dichloromethane, um, which is this molecule here. And um, you won't need to put the numbers in red because there's only one carbon there. 
So you can just say dichloromethane. But this is called a CFC, and they were used um, a few years ago um, as a refrigerant in the back of fridges. Uh, and some of the longer chain CFCs uh, with more carbons in were used for dry cleaning agents as well. Now, we didn't really know about the effects of these until um, a little bit later on when scientists start to discover holes in the ozone layer. Um, and the ozone layer is O3, and it's the layer that protects us from uh, harmful um, ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Um, and because if there's a hole in there, the UV can get through, and then it increases the risk of skin cancer. So um, what they decided to do is they banned it as a refrigerant and in dry cleaning fluids as well. Uh, and if this gets into the atmosphere, it effectively causes a, a reaction to occur. Um, and this is, a, again, it's a free radical reaction. Uh, and because of the abundance of UV light anyway in the atmosphere from the sun, uh, these reactions actually happen quite frequently. So what I've done is I've taken a, a, a little bit of this molecule here, the CFC, and I've drawn it down here. Now the UV from the uh, sun splits this uh, uh, molecule or this bit of the molecule here uh, homolytically, so we get two radicals being formed. The radical that we're interested in is the Cl dot radical. And this Cl dot radical is obviously the, this is the uh, initiation step. And then this Cl dot radical can then react with ozone, which is O3, uh, and produce what called ClO dot. So effectively, the radical has been passed from uh, one place to another. So we've got the Cl dot on the ozone, and we form O2 gas. Now, we haven't got any ozone left. But remember, the radical products of step one must be the reactant in step two. And so the ClO dot will then react with more ozone that's in the atmosphere, produce Cl dot and 2O2. And again, the product, the radical product of step two must be a reactant of step one. So that's the way in which you can, which you can check. So overall, what we've got is two molecules of O3. And I'll put this here. Two molecules of O3 will effectively turn into three molecules of O2. Uh, and that is effectively the overall reaction for the depletion of ozone. And you will need to know that as well um, for the exam. Now, just one final point. You can see that this is not really a traditional mechanism with loads and loads of curly arrows. Um, they are written like this to show steps. So you don't need to worry about too much about the um, drawing of the curly arrows in these immediate steps here. Uh, the exam board will tell you uh, if they want you to do that. And that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.